Hey everyone, it's Mr. G, and in this video, we're going to modify a past video that we did, uh, three random starting locations, and we're going to modify it so that we can have four different sprites all starting at different locations. So in our past video, in our prior video, what we did was we made it so that the sprite can start at three specific um, locations, one of three specific locations. And so when you click on the green flag, you get a random number, and each random number is basically assigned or assigns a different location that the sprite can start at. So what we can do to tweak this so that it starts at any location, actually we have a couple of ways of doing it. One is to change um, where the sprite goes to so that instead of hard coding it, instead of putting 0, 116, or negative 185, negative 120, what we do is we pick random numbers within the go to block. So as you can see, I'm grabbing the pick random number block, and I'm just going to put it inside of the X and the Y inputs. And now what we want to do is, instead of uh, picking a random number from 1 to 10, we want to pick a random number from, for the X, we got to go from negative 240, 240, if I can type, to positive 240. Um, and for the Y, the up down, there's only 100, um, 180 negative, 180 positive. So we'll go to go, we got to go negative 180 to positive 180. And now, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm going to modify this so I can just test this out a little bit. I'm just going to make sure that it always goes to this, uh, well, it always goes to a random location. I want to test it out by doing this. So I'm going to click on the green flag. That should still work. Let me just drag this down a little bit. So right now, the only thing that's going to run is, is this when I click on the green flag. So let's test it out. And when I click on the green flag, it looks like the sprite is going to a whole bunch of different random locations and it looks like it's working. Now you might notice that sometimes he ends up being cut off or he's, his like head's like being cut off over here. And that's because the, the, the position that the sprite is in, which right now is 202, 164, that's based off the center point of the sprite, the center of the sprite. So what we could do is we could say, okay, you know what, maybe if, so that the head doesn't get cut off, we can't go any higher than 127 on the Y. So you see, I just drag the cat down a little bit and I put him at the highest point he could ever, he should ever be. And that's about 127, 129. So I'm gonna modify my script here so that I can't go up to 180. I can only go up to 129, let's say. And the same thing on the bottom. I'm gonna drag him to the bottom and I'm looking at the, the lowest y value and it just so happens is negative 129 also so i'm going to make this negative 129 to positive 129 so now this cat can't go um he can't go out of bounds basically okay and we can test it out by clicking it a bunch of times what we could also do is we could just say uh go to zero and then just test out the y by itself so now he's just going to go up and down but you'll see he's never going to be cut off. His legs are never going to be cut off and his head's never going to be cut off. He's just going to be, the highest he can go is to those, those, um, those extremes, uh, positive 129 or negative 129 on the y-axis. So I am happy with that. I want to do the same thing for the x-axis. So I'm going to make sure that he can't go past this point. So his center point is around negative 192. So I'm going to change this to negative 192. And I'm assuming it's going to be pretty close on the other side. Yeah, 192. And I nailed it exactly <laughs> when I placed him there. So there we go. So now uh, this cat, when we click on the green flag, he's going to go to a different starting position, but he's never going to be cut off. His arm, his leg, his head, it's never going to be cut off. He's always going to be within the, within the stage. Now, if you, if you do it like this, you might not want to have it inside of this uh, define block. You might just have it as this. Let me remove this. Let me just keep this all the way all over here. So if you want to have random starting positions, you really just need this. You don't need to pick a random number and then set the position for the random number that you're trying to pick. So I'm just going to leave this over here on the side. I could delete it, uh, but this would work. All right, so now that we have this code working, I actually think it's probably nice to abstract it and make it into your own block. So I'm going to go into my blocks 
create a block and we'll call this random position. Um, no labels, no inputs, nothing like that. Um, and then that's going to be the definition for, for that block. So then we could just use the random position block when the green flag is clicked. And that's a little bit more readable. It's a little bit easier to understand when someone's just reading your code. They see that when the green flag is clicked, the sprite goes to a random position. And he's always going to stay on the screen. He's never going to be cut off. So I like that. I don't like using the go to random position block because his arms or legs could be cut off, even though there are ways to um, kind of prevent that or to keep picking a random position until you find uh, one that you want. But I would not recommend going that route. I would just do it like this. And I hope that was helpful. If you want to bring this, this code over to another sprite, because I think it was mentioned that someone wanted four sprites. Let me hide that. Um, let me just um, add a couple of, or let me just add a random sprite. All right, so there's, um, there we go. So we have uh, f four random sprites. And what I can do is I can go to the original, and I don't think the other sprites will have the, the uh, random position block brought in there. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to bring the definition into all of the, into each of them. So you just grab it, grab the script, drag it over the sprites in the sprite uh, container or corral, drop it in there. And now each of these has that and you can use it. So when the green flag is clicked, you can bring that event in. You can go to a random position. I should actually probably rename this to go to random position. And then the same idea with the bear and the same idea with the bell. So now when I click on the green flag, they all go to a different starting position. And that's four sprites. Um, actually, now that I look at it, you might have to change the definition for the bear. Um, because as you can see, he's using the, the values that work for the cat, but he's a little bit bigger. So we, want, we might want to limit how far you can go along the X and Y axis. So it looks like the lowest we want him to go is um, negative 128. And we'll probably do positive 128 on the x-axis or 127, 128. And then on the y, we'll, we'll go as, down, as far down as negative 103 or as high up as 99. Okay, so now when I click on the green flag, all of them are somewhere on the stage. Um, you might not like that they're on top of each other in some cases or that they're touching, but you can write code and uh, modify it so that if they are touching, it picks a new random position. All right, so I hope that was helpful.